How should they handle wastewater? That's the question posed by city leaders in three Harlan County communities. The proposed plan coming up. And chaos on Capitol Hill during a committee meeting has legislators at odds. What happened that led to lawmakers resorting to personal insults? And a first alert for some summer-like weather by early next week. Those details coming up as Mountain News First at Four continues. Mountain News First at Four continues. The Tri-Cities in Harlan County, Cumberland, Benham and Lynch are looking to work together to fix an issue impacting the quality of life in each town. The three cities are looking to revamp how to handle wastewater. WYMT's Madison Carmouche has more on what officials think may be the best plan. After a public meeting on Tuesday, officials with Cumberland, Benham and Lynch believe that combining their wastewater systems may be the best option to keeping all three cities earning revenue rather than losing money while losing population. All three mayors agree that the problem has been an issue for years and it's important that they address it now while there is funding available. I thought the meeting went well. Uh, we're like any other small city. We don't have a lot of revenue coming in uh, to maintain what we got. So uh, I think the only way that we're going to make it is if we start working together. Uh, th we have three water plants and three sewer plants within five miles of each other. The Cumberland mayor let me know that his plant is the most up to date out of the three and that it would be able to support both Benham and Lynch merging to use this plant as well. In Harlan County, Madison Carmouche, WIMT Mountain News. Now we'll have more tonight at 6 about the study conducted by the Environmental Protection Agency, which led to a variety of solutions for the cities to consider moving forward. Well, rain, rain, and more rain. That's the forecast on this Friday. As off and on showers continue, some good news. Nothing severe, also nothing too heavy. But rounds of rain continue on this Friday afternoon. Upon first alert, pinpoint Doppler tracking a few heavier downpours, pushing over Corbin, also not too far away from London over the next few minutes there. And some more heavier downpours just to the south of Manchester and Clay County, also for parts of Knox into Bell Counties at this hour. More light showers in the Big Sandy Valley from Letcher County, pushing into Pike County, also for Floyd into Johnson and Martin counties at this hour. And if you're taking the Mountain Parkway this afternoon, more showers are possible from Stanton, also to Campton for Wolf County and into McGoffin counties at this hour. A live look across the region tracking some cloudy weather, also some showers in some areas. Those temperatures are below average on this Friday. Thanks to the gloomy weather, most of us in the upper 60s to lower 70s, up to 69 for London, Jackson, Irvin, up to 68 for Hazard, also in Pikeville at this hour. If you have those plans this evening, be sure to have the umbrella close as more often on showers are on the way. But we are tracking some drier and warmer weather by Sunday and early next week. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right, Cameron, thank you. A U.S. built pier is now operational off Gaza and trucks are rolling ashore to deliver desperately needed aid. But this breakthrough comes as we learn at least 20 American medical workers are trapped in Gaza after Israel closed the Rafah crossing. CBS's MTS Tayeb spoke with one of those workers and a warning. This story contains some disturbing images. Black smoke rises above Rafah as Israel's southern offensive widens. And in the north, they're now fighting a resurgence of Hamas. Fighting that didn't spare 10-year-old Samea, who lost her arm in an airstrike and needs advanced medical care. I want the border crossings opened again, she says, so I can go and get a new arm and be like everyone else again. Also in Gaza are around 20 American medics, trapped after Israel blocked all land crossings in the south. Now doing all they can while they wait to be allowed to go home. We see explosive injuries, burns, um, shrapnel wounds. So and the, the problem with this is these are wounds that we don't usually see in America. Among the trapped medics are trauma nurse Monica Johnson from Oregon and Dr. Mahmoud Sabha from Texas. 
we came in with such good intentions, obviously, and wanting to help and save lives. We haven't had a single wound patient in the ICU that has made it out. Not a single one. No. Most of their patients are among the youngest in Gaza. She had glitter on her fingernails. She had discolored hair. It's these things, like these things, um, it, 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 it really affects you because um, the innocence, you really see the innocence. Sabah and Johnson say they know their families are worried about them, but as medics, they had to help the people of Gaza. I've always said to my kids, follow your heart. And in my heart, this feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. I will. Still, every day is a challenge. Medical supplies, we are getting almost none because we bring in our own medical supplies and we're burning through it. You've been working alongside your Palestinian colleagues for all these weeks now. How are they doing? They're, they're broken and they are empty. So the thought of leaving them and, um, you know, leaving them while they're so empty is heartbreaking. And we've just received this message from nurse Monica as she tries to leave Gaza, which I'll read to you. It says, we are currently waiting at the Israeli border. It was a difficult passage. We had a tank pointing its barrel at us for exactly one hour before letting us through one of the checkpoints. We were so heartbroken to leave over half our team and the people of Gaza. I am so fearful for their safety. That's nurse Monica Johnson from Portland, Oregon as she tries to leave Gaza. NPR's time, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Pope Francis is weighing in on a controversial move being made by the state of Texas at the U.S. southern border. During his historic interview with CBS's Nora O'Donnell, set to air partly this weekend on 60 Minutes, the pontiff was asked his thoughts on the Lone Star State attempting to shut down a Catholic charity on the border with Mexico that offers undocumented migrants humanitarian assistance. That is madness, sheer madness. To close the border and leave them there, that is madness. The migrant has to be received. Thereafter, you see how you're going to deal with them. Maybe you have to send them back. I don't know. But each case ought to be considered humanely. The U.S. border is just one of several topics touched on during his sit-down with CBS News, the first time a pope has given an in-depth one-on-one interview to a U.S. broadcast network. You can watch an extended version of Nora's interview with Pope Francis this Sunday on 60 Minutes followed by a primetime special on Monday night. That's all here on WYMT and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Things got heated on Capitol Hill last night in a House Oversight Committee meeting when lawmakers resorted to personal insults. CBS's Scott McFarlane has more on that. It was a late night hearing in that Republican-led House Oversight Committee over a measure to find the U.S. Attorney General in contempt. It got uniquely ugly and contentious after a question was asked to Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene by Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett. Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here oh, about just a, uh, I don't think you know what you're here President. for. Well, you the one talking about. I, guess I, I think your fake eyelashes are messing up. No, what you're ain't nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. <laughs> and I would like uh, to move to, to take down Ms. Green's words. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical spin, appearance of another spin. person? Are your Move feelings hurt? her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby girl. Oh, really? Don't even play, baby girl. Gonna, I don't think We are so. going to move, and we're going to take your words down. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A uh, uh, what now? Calm to down. Be, no, you please calm don't down. tell me to calm down. Calm down. Because y'all talk calm noise down. and then you You're can't out of control. Because if I, Look, chairman, if I can come we and talk about her, y'all going to have a problem. Chairman. After all of those exchanges, there was a vote in the panel as to whether to kick Congresswoman Green out of the hearing. Republicans voted to keep her in place and she declined multiple requests to apologize. Scott McFarland, CBS News, The Capitol. Coming up on First at Four, do your children play with water beads? Why experts say the toys could be dangerous or even deadly. 
and wet weather will continue for those Friday night plans. Your forecast coming up after this break. Steve, congratulations on your 25th year anniversary at WYMT. When I first heard 25 years, I was like, did WYMT hire Steve when he was 10? Doesn't make any sense. Keep going. You age like fine wine. 